The FDA, CDC have called for a temporary pause on the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine after a rare blood clotting disorder was found in six American women. The single shot vaccine has been administered nearly 7 million times here. Joining us now is Dr. Amish Adalja, an infectious disease expert and senior scholar at the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security. Uh, first of all, doctor, thank you so much for being with us. And I want to get your general reaction to this big news, this worldwide news that our government is now putting that pause on the use of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The bottom line is that this is a very, very rare complication and not the normal course of events that you would expect for the vast majority of people who've gotten the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. I worry that this pause is going to increase vaccine hesitancy. I think it's important to understand this complication, to come up with guidance for this complication, and to alert healthcare providers about this complication. But I wonder if this blanket pause may have a negative effect on the uptake of this vaccine once the pause is lifted. Over the past year, there have been times We've done stories about shortages of Clorox wipes. You go into a store, the shelves are clean, you can't find any, any disinfectant at all. CDC now coming up and saying one in 10,000 chance of there being surface transmission. Doctor, have, did we miss it somewhere? Are people just being a little careful? Or, or could we have done a better job of telling people what the real focus should be, what the real threat should be in terms of getting people to understand how this virus could be transmitted? I definitely believe that we we messed up when, when there was a lot of focus on surface transmission, when we were seeing the epidemiological data that people were getting infected from other people. And we saw people cleaning their mail, we had people learning how to clean their groceries, and, and they were spending a lot of time on it, and they weren't really focusing what, on where it really mattered, which was wearing masks and trying to social distance and, and washing your hands when you, touch, when you shake another person's hand, trying to avoid crowded and congregated places. That's where the bulk of transmission was going on, but yet there was so much emphasis on surfaces, I think we distracted people and it and it changes their risk perception and I think there's a lot of time wasted trying to to get that right and now I think we're finally getting there but this is what happens during a pandemic that there is a lot of shifting information the public perceives risk in a different way than what the actual science does and and I think it's sometimes hard to to give people actionable tips for what to do so telling people wash your groceries wash wash your mail or whatever it might have been that was something people could easily do then than some of the other things and and I think it, it did in the end up kind of break the trust between the public health community mm -hmm. and and the general public and hopefully we learn to get this right but I, I think that this type of mistake happens over and over again in these types of situations and doctor you talk about mistakes made I want to take you back to October of 2019 where Johns Hopkins and Bloomberg School of Public Health uh, ran through a global pandemic preparedness drill and found it's hard to believe that the United States ranked number one in the world, although no country in the world was fully prepared to face a pandemic. We ranked number one in the world. In looking back, how could that have been gotten so wrong? And what lessons do you think you've learned and, and there at Johns Hopkins have been learned to prepare us better for the next pandemic in the future? The biggest lesson to learn is that even if you are ranked the most prepared nation in the world, if you don't have leadership that's going to be proactive, that's going to meet the threat as it comes and not allow a virus like this to basically go January, February, and half of March without any mitigation efforts, if you don't have that kind of political will to actually take the right actions, the actions that countries like Taiwan took in December of 2019 just on rumors of COVID-19, if you don't have that, no matter how prepared you are, no matter how great your CDC is, no matter how great Dr. Fauci is, it's not going to to work if people don't listen to it and actually implement it from the highest level on. And we had very bad presidential leadership uh, for, for so long during this pandemic where mistake after mistake occurred and government failure after government failure occurred. And I think we have to get this right now. We have a, a public health system that has been decimated, that has been undervalued and underfunded for decade after decade after decade. And this is the result, that we don't have contact tracers. We still couldn't test. We had a flawed vaccine rollout. All of that really redounds on the fact that no matter how good you do, if, if you don't have the execution power and you don't have the leadership to do it, a pandemic is going to be made much worse. And we cannot let, let this happen when we face our next infectious disease emergency. Yeah. It is truly a matter of life and death. And so many lessons have been learned and are continuing to be learned. Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security Senior Scholar Dr. Amish Adalja, thank you so much for being with us today. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I just assume on his desk he has a sign that says, tell it like it is. Yeah, <laughs> that which dude, is great. He exactly is exactly what you want to hear. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, hey there.
there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.